Got a couple of texts here. Loving the show, ladies. Ab, fab, Kiwi style. <laughs> Who's Patsy? <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> awesome listeners. I, I love this input. Someone says, no, you guys sound like the top twins. <laughs> <laughs> I love the top twins. Really enjoying the show. Could you keep going through Marty's show? Oh, sure. Ooh, ouch. Ooh, we don't know enough about <laughs> sport. We only know about two balls, eh? <laughs> <laughs> rock, rock. Oh dear. Righty ho. <laughs> yeah, we're not very good at any other round balls, are we? Okay, we're going to um, someone who doesn't know anything about balls much either, I don't think. And that is the wonderful Derek Fox. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we were actually in a very jolly mood because we've been called the to, uh, to, uh, Ronnie Corbett. Um, the to, the, we're two Ronnies. Someone suggested we yeah. were the top twins <laughs> or Ab Fab Crew. Kiwi style. <laughs> <laughs> and you've known me long enough, Derek. <laughs> I have known you a very long time, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm so pleased we've managed to get you on because we've been focusing quite a bit, and justifiably so, um, on the Hawke's Bay because that's where Larissa's come from and that was where I got the idea because she was here, she could come and do some work for me. Uh, <laughs> which she's done, she's done an amazing <laughs> job so far. She's held, held a concert where we've raised some funds and now she's on the radio show, both entertaining and informing people about what's happening out there. Um, but we have missed the um, information coming out of the Gisborne area mm. and I just thought it'd be really nice to hear where you think things are going well, where things are not. There's a few stories out there today uh, that would indicate there are a few problems and uh, just where you think the government needs to lift its game if it does. Well, uh, maybe I can just concentrate on some of the stuff that I've seen and also the extent of the damage and, and um, you know, the town of, township of Whitehall, which... Uh, you know, I know a little bit about. Um, yep. <laughs> I was there this time last week. I was in, I went into town. The, the cyclone came through uh, that area on um, Monday night, early hours, Tuesday, and um, took all the power out and all the connectivity for all of the, all of that area. In fact, from Hastings all the way up the east coast, things went out. Uh, and I went into town because I've got a, a little generator, which I hadn't used for 10 years, so not surprisingly, it didn't fire up immediately when I tried to get it going on Tuesday. Um, but I thought I'll zip into town, while I'll get a new plug for it and get the tank flushed and some fuel, and I'll be right. Well, as I drove in, I had to drive through water, and then there was more water either side, well, not quite more water either side of the bridge, but there was plenty of water on one side of the bridge and some water under the bridge, but the bridge itself was still above water. Yep. Um, I, and later that day was when it, it had already spilled its banks when I was there in the morning, but later that day was when it actually drowned one side of Whitehall and mm. spilled over into the other side as well. And mm. that's where there's terrific uh, damage and that's where it's going to take a long time to fix because there are houses which are trashed. Maybe 80%, it's, it, wow. you know, they've estimated that 80% don't have any power and don't have any insurance. Oh, so, wow. So, you know, there's a massive, no. massive, massive problem there as well. Oh. Um, so basically, the, put, heaps of, the more vulnerable part, so what, part of the population lives there, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. And, and, you know, you can guess who they are. Yep. And, um, and then there's been a lot of stuff coming in, but they're now saying, hey, that's enough for now. You know, thanks so much for all the stuff you've sent in, but enough for now. I mean, Waro Air, Airstrip has been busier than Auckland, I think, and in the last yeah. few days yeah. with stuff coming in and out. There are choppers all over the place um, and supplying, rightly so, and checking on farmers out in the backcountry, people they haven't heard from, mm -hmm. um, and dropping in generators and water and immediate supplies and stuff like that. So there's been a lot of that work going on, but now they're trying to consolidate. They're trying to, I mean, the power's back on through most, most of, or the most populated parts of Wairau Township power's on, the power's on at Mahia. Uh, connectivity is not on where I come from, so it's pretty hard to be get in and out unless there's a Starlink. And then there have been one or two Starlinks that have sprung up 
and have been set up. So there's one out at Mahia Beach where people are able to go and reassure their loved ones that they're okay. Fantastic. But, uh, I, but I had to laugh because a number of the reasons that people went on was um, to ask their neighbours, have you been feeding my cat? <laughs> <And> <laughs> Oh. That's people's eyes, oh, you know. Zone, it, eh? it, you know, that's that's yeah, justifiable. Yes, exactly. And then and then I was in in Wairau Township the day before yesterday, where the, the Marae where they're cooking all the food because they they're cooking the food and they're saying, well, there's no point in taking food to people, taking meat and yeah. other things to people if there's no power and they can't they can't cook it anyway. They've got yep. no way of storing it. So the best thing they're doing is they've got one of the Marae, which is. Fortunately, very modern and also built uh, in a high enough place and a safe enough place not to have had any water through it. They're cooking there and then distributing the food or taking it into the town hall in Wairau Township. Wow. Now, in a way, this marae is a bit, it's, it's a bit problematic because it's a little way out of town. Mm. So people were finding it difficult to go there because... Yeah. They didn't have enough petrol and there was no FPOS, so they couldn't buy gas or didn't have cash to be able to go and buy fuel when the pumps opened up. So the food has been taken around to these vulnerable areas and also into this, um, the town hall in the centre of town itself. Gotcha. And so that's how they're going, you know. I find that um, it's interesting how... Uh, hi, Derek, this is Larissa. Um, it's interesting how the donations get more and more defined as every day goes and the needs sake. It's yes. not the time now to be cleaning out your closet and rocking up with three rubbish bags of no, it's clothes. Not. No, it's not. Because mm. the people don't, you know, they, you know thank you very much mm. for thinking course, about us. But in course. fact, we don't need that now. Mm. Yeah. And again, it's really funny because they sent groups out. And I, I was at that Marae where they were planning where they were areas they were going to go to. And they said... You know what's funny? They said, you know what people we say now, what, what is it you really need right now? Can I have some food for my dog, please? Yeah. Or for my cat? Yeah. Oh, that's quite hard. It's quite hard. It's quite yeah. touching, isn't it? Yeah, it is really touching, especially older people, and that's their source of yes, you know, companionship. Yes. Well, that's their friend, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I couldn't believe it. In one of the areas that was most trashed, um, which is not far from the centre of town, there's two sides to the river. There's the northern side, which is known as North Clyde, and then the, the other side, which is just the main Wairau Township. Funnily enough, the township of Wairau is actually, uh, the town planning of Wairau was based on a place called Clyde in Scotland, and they just picked up the street maps of, of Clyde in Scotland and plonked it down on that bend in the river, right. and that became Wairau. Oh, so... And, um, and, the, but, um, and the other thing that I was like, and we're going to ask you about, Derek, too, is we've, hear, we've heard a lot today about the slash issues. People are, are really angry with forestry right at the moment. Yep. Uh, and I did a bit yep. of an analysis last night and uh, and looked at some of the regulations around slash. And I, are they, I, honestly and truly, they've been written by the, by the industry, um, even mm. though they're government regulations. It's pretty clear. Yes. Uh, and the, but the other thing is, is the fines that were handed out last time We've, we're quite small, um, I would have thought, in the scheme yeah. of things, considering the amount of damage that they've done. I mean, they got they fined six or seven of the companies, which is fair enough, but yep. it took a long time, and then the fines didn't seem to be that much anyway. And I understand it's the cost of actually dealing with the slash that makes it unprofitable for forestry industries if they do it properly. Um, that's the guts of it, or the way I see it. Am I right? Well, well also, yeah, I think so, because, well, you know, yeah. I mean, look, this is not a new thing, is it? You no. know, in, in, in 1938, when they were putting the railway through the Mahia area, um, they had a, a, a camp, a railway camp, down in a place called the Corpuafara Valley. And they had what we used to call a cloud burst, which is the sort of incident that we've just had the other day, where we have a major um, um, weather pattern that drops a horrible lot of rain in a certain place. Yep. <coughs> There were some logs that were blocked, and, and these were logs that had been cut to make way for the railway, and the logs were blocking the stream, and they created a dam which held for a while and then let go, Ooh. and it came down the valley and killed 21 people. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, you know, and this has been happening for donkey's years, but 
I, I drove into, I drove from Mahia to Gisborne today. I'm in Gisborne now, and it's the first time I've been out of Mahia since before the cyclone. Um, and the slash on beaches where you wouldn't even imagine it would be there. Or maybe not just slash, there's logs as well. There were big logs there from trees that have been, that the bank of the river has eroded, they've fallen in, they've come down, and they've spread mar- for miles. You yep. know, there are apples on the beach at Mahi, which is miles away from any of the orchards. And I understand crayfish and par was and dead too. Well, it may be power. I didn't get to them quick enough, so that's the problem. But um, uh, um, and dead sheep and dead any, cows. There's some dead sheep, yeah, and dead cows, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I, I could tell. So, so there's all of that. But but one of one of the big problems, of course, is and I, and I'm not in any way trying to suggest that this is even close to mitigation. But is that there are so many people employed in the forestry industry. Mm, mm. And so you got you got on the east coast where this was seen as the you know the panacea. I mean, many others have been offered in the past. You know, yeah. Once upon a time, we were going to make our living by growing maize. Well, that lasted one or two seasons. Mm. We've grown peas mm. um, for waddies. Waddies hinds. Well, that's gone. And so forestry has been there, and they've got all these trees. Yeah. And they've got a wall of wood, and there are so many people employed in that industry. Mm. It's not just the, you know, there's, there's the logging problem. truck drivers. There's a, yes. Mm. So it's not a simple fix, but boy, it needs to be fixed. Yeah, and and some good minds. Uh, you know, there's biofuel, there's a biofuel, exactly. um, which, but I well, mean, that, we've that, got that, to get the that, quantum. That, that, we that might have the quantum. <laughs> I, I, I think they do have the quantum. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, it'll be really interesting, and I hope they've got a task force that's going to look at that. I mean, they're doing an inquiry. It needs to be stopped calling it a bloody inquiry. In fact, I was going to have a word to Kieran McNally oh, yeah. and say, stop calling it an inquiry. You want a solution. You don't want just to know what went wrong. You actually want to know how to fix it and your way forward yeah. um, instead of sitting there and having and a bit want, of a bleep fest. Yeah. yeah, crazy stuff. And, and, and the, the, the terrific problem is, is you, you know, the New Zealand... New Zealanders pride themselves on being able to make anything out of number eight wire, you know? Mm. And uh, and I'm not sure that we should be very proud of that at all because that's almost the way our roads are being made and that's why you get any excess rain and the roads disappear. I mean, State Highway 35 up the East Coast is just... Mm. It's just patchwork on patchwork. Yep. You know, there's Band-Aids on top of Band-Aids. Yep. Yep. I totally agree with you, Derek. Hey, um, look, Derek, um, in terms of um, how long are you going to be in Mahia for this time? Well, how long is a piece of string? I yeah. mean, you know, uh, it could be a while. Yeah, because for, for our listeners, Derek um, divides his time between here and the Cook Islands, um, pretty much. Um, although you're thinking of coming back permanently, aren't you? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, mm, yeah. I, I should have gone back. La- I should have gone back last week. I was due to go back, um, fly out of here on Tuesday, mm. out of Gisborne to Auckland, and then to Rarotonga on um, Wednesday morning. But you know that all went by the board. Yeah, and um, I'll probably just stay on now um, mm. into March. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do. And I'm sure you'll be yeah. able to help with tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to. Tomorrow, I'm going to. Well, I'm taking some guys into Waro today who want to. They come from a Maori organisation that wants to help. And the big thing is to be able to find something that they can do without just getting in the way and yeah. becoming part of the problem. Because well, so yeah, that, that's that's important. I mean, during the Christchurch earthquake, mm. um, a group of us took a took a barbecue, a big barbecue I'll down there, and that. we cooked yeah. on the side of the road <laughs> in Aranui. Yep. And we cooked, and we cooked five thousand sausages, about five thousand patties. Mm. We had smoked eel from that lake just south of Christchurch, That's being right. all eels yep. dinner. Yep. And um, it was just, you know, incredible. Yep. And we did that for a week. Yep. And then the lights started coming on around us, and I knew that people were starting to get back into their homes again, and yep. and settling in, and, and and the need for us was disappearing, if not disappeared. Yep. So. As you know, my wife, Jaywin, was very keen that we should do the same thing in Wairau. Mm. I said, I'll go and have a look first. Yep. And times, times have changed. The circumstances have changed. Mm. That's not as useful. We need to find some other way of doing it. So yep. we've got a group of guys coming in today. I'm going to take them into Wairau 
tomorrow and have a look around and then push on up to Lake Waikato Mona because as far as I know, no one's been up there. So I'll go up and have oh, a look well, around. I suppose keep in top, touch. We, we're going to have to go over the there. news in a minute, Derek. But, hey, look, keep yeah, in okay. touch. You, you, uh, and and if there's anything up there that you think we can do um, through our media channels um, here and elsewhere, please let us know. And, look, thanks very much for giving up your time today. Uh, I think it's been yeah. probably one of the better interviews we've had today and we've had some bloody good interviews. Um, so from Ronnie okay. Corbett and Ronnie Barker, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's Kath and Kim, um, or the top yeah. twins, I'm not sure, but thank Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you, Dan. As long as that, as draw, draw the line at Heckle and Jekyll, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> and you keep in touch, Derek, and you're with Larissa okay. Kellett and Tina Nixon on the platform.